If you do that on a robot, the robot stops working. Right? Yep. If you do that on a conveyor belt, the conveyor belt stops going. So do you think that production managers really want to update computers? The answer is no. So another problem you constantly have at the edges is this kind of idea of when and how can I make sure that my stuff is up to date? Growing a business requires a holistic approach that extends beyond sales and marketing. This approach needs alignment among people, processes, and technologies. So if you're a business owner, operations, or finance leader looking to learn growth strategies from your peers and competitors, you're tuned into the right podcast. Welcome to the WBS Podcast, where scalable growth using business systems is our number one priority. Now, here is your host, Sam Gupta. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the WBS Podcast. I'm Sam Gupta, your host and principal consultant at digital transformation consulting firm Elevate IQ. Edge computing is powerful. It can help companies monitor and maintain distributed assets that would otherwise require significant capital and manpower to manage. In addition, these technologies allow your technicians to control those devices remotely without having to travel. You can also gather tons of insights that can improve the operational performance of these devices and help them recover for common error conditions. However, due to the cybersecurity issues and data centers traditional design, adopting these edge technologies has been challenging. In today's episode, our guest Jason Anderson shares his insights into edge technologies and how manufacturers and field service companies can take advantage of them. He also discusses how edge networks and their communication requirements differ from traditional and cloud technologies. Finally, he discusses how the conventional air gap between OT and IT has been the barrier for edge adoption and what options companies have for them to take advantage of these technologies fully. Let me introduce Jason to you. Jason Anderson is Vice President of Business Line Management and is responsible for setting the product roadmaps and go-to-market strategies for Stratus products and services. Jason has a deep understanding of both on-premise and cloud-based infrastructure and has been responsible for the successful market delivery of products and services for almost 20 years. Prior to joining Stratus in 2013, Jason was Director of Product Line Management at Red Hat. In this role, he was responsible for the go-to-market strategy, product introductions and launches, as well as product marketing for the JBoss application products. Jason also previously held product management positions at Red Hat and IBM Software Group. With that, let's get to the conversation. Hey, Jason. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Good afternoon. Of course. And I am super excited to have you, Jason, because the time you spent in the Edge community and the kind of projects you are working in, it's going to be so exciting for our listeners. Just to kick things off, Jason, do you want to start with your personal story and what you are focusing on these days? Oh, sure. I'd be happy to. So, um, well, for the last four years, I've spent my time uh, really working on helping develop what is now the edge computing market. Yeah. And uh, the storyline to that is is maybe a little bit non-traditional because, uh, first off, what we do is we build mission-critical computing systems. So I joined uh, the company I work at today is called Stratus Technologies. um, And for about 40 years, we've built these strong mission-critical computing systems that run like telecommunications networks and payment processing systems and ATMs, really, really kind of high-end computing. When I came on board, the idea was how can we begin to bring the bring this type of technology to other places? And as, as I started to explore it, I realized that some customers are already starting to use some of these systems in manufacturing and yep. energy and transportation, all these places. And we started to look at that and really think about its relationship with the IoT and what was going on with IoT and also the relationship that the technology had with the technology kind of of the moment at the t- time, which was like SCADA and DCS systems or yeah. or push or being as some sort of broker between 
the edge and, and maybe an MRP system or something like that. Yeah. And we started to really explore that. What we found was fascinating because really about four years ago, everybody was thinking that somehow all this stuff at the edge was magically going to get into the cloud. Right? Yeah. And we realized very quickly that that was not going to be feasible. There's latency issues. There's issues with reliability, not only of the connection, but also of uh, you know, some of the applications at the edge have real-time needs, right? Yeah. And, and you know, cl- public cloud computing isn't really a great real-time uh, environment necessarily, right? It's generally kind of semi real time. So you you really started to realize that this kind of notion, uh, uh, unlike a lot of other industries where moving into the cloud was hugely beneficial, that the manufacturing space and, and the other edge, uh, the other edge verticals, so to speak, they were not going to be able to kind of go all in on cloud. There was going to be a hybrid yeah. environment. Yeah. Um, and we realized that we had some momentum there. So well, let's figure out how to kind of design a next generation set of products and, and really help customers figure out how to make the most out of um, this edge opportunity and how it relates directly to digital transformation. Because really we see the edge technology or edge computing as a way to facilitate digital transformation projects. That's that's the value for the customer. The value is not necessarily, hey, I bought an edge computer. It's I bought an edge computer to complete a project that helps me reduce my costs, enable things to be done remotely. Yeah. You know, maybe it, maybe it's a uh, deploy entirely new classes of applications. Oh, there's all kinds of great benefits to digital transformation, right? Yeah. So uh, amazing, uh, you know, story. And I'm super excited to dig into all of that. But before that, we have one of these standard questions that we ask every single guest that actually come on the show. And that is going to be, Jason, yeah. your perspective on business growth. Oh, okay. Well... <laughs> You know, with uh, you know, here I am, and uh, just to set some context for folks, it's the it's the late summer of 2021, and I'm here in the United States. Yeah. Um, which means we're kind of uh, still struggling with uh, the coronavirus and, yeah. and, and the Delta variants and those types of things. What's interesting is is that um, when I look at the broad market, what I see is that I see kind of uh, the growth is coming back. It's not necessarily back to where it was pre-COVID in all industries. Some industries are kind of almost back. Some are a little behind still. Some are like transportation, unfortunately, kind of far behind. Yeah. Um, so my perspective on it right now is, is that it's coming back. Um, and we're starting to see people think about strategic projects again. Uh, yeah. It's starting to think about, you know, moving beyond just kind of survival mode. Yeah. So it's uh, my perspective is, is that growth is beginning to happen or growth is happening, but it's not happening necessarily at the pace it was a couple of years ago. So when we look at it from a company, from a company perspective, that's yeah. kind of a global macro picture. Yeah. When we look at it from a company perspective, what we're seeing is people are looking, we're growing in, in, at the edge because, um, because people, there's in addition to doing new projects, we also have a capability where we can kind of help a customer consolidate a lot of their old technology. Yeah, <laughs> and so we're seeing probably a little bit better than market growth, just because people are saying, "Well, how do I optimize what I already have versus doing something new and strategic?" We can we can help the customer in both directions. So I'd say we're doing pretty good because of that. But but the reality of it is is that you know I think we're not doing as well as we thought we would do because mainly because of the pandemic. So I'd say that's been the, that that's been what's holding us back a bit. So we kind of have a we have a little bit of safety net where we can optimize the current environment too. So that that helps us out. Yeah, and I certainly agree with you that there is a little bit of uh, uncertainty overall in terms of the expectations how the market is gonna go in the next six to six months to one year, and sometimes that stresses people out, especially folks in the finance community and um, our executives are going to be finance operations. They are always thinking about the risks. Uh, they, when they look at these transformation, obviously they need to be slightly more confident in the top line before they can invest uh, in anything and so that you know they have the predictable bottom line as well. So now when we talk yeah. about these technologies, now uh, you sort of have a, a little bit of understanding of what our community is. These are you know finance folks, uh, executives, uh, operations executives, uh, they don't necessarily understand what edge is, to be honest, okay? What is a SCADA system? Okay. So from their perspective, yeah. let's say, if you were to describe how they can take advantage of edge system and how it is going to be different from the traditional systems 
that were used, let's say, for monitoring, because Edge is actually going to provide a lot of data, a lot of insight. Um, you know, it's going to be a system that is deployed right. somewhere. But from the technical perspective, it's a massive difference. But as the CFO of the manufacturing organization, I'm not sure if I understand it well enough to be able to understand how it is going to be useful for me. Sure. So I think I think uh, it's funny because a lot of the examples I use when I describe Edge are actually based upon kind of common everyday consumer technologies, right? Yeah. And so if you think about like, um, so let's start with like, where is Edge, right? right. I think that's, so before we get into technology, where is Edge and what's happening there? So when we think of Edge, it's pretty much a place that is remote and disconnected from a data center, like a traditional data center. So yeah. if you work in, if you're in the finance space and you work in a big office building with your team, you probably have some form of data center in that building or a data center on that campus where the people are doing work at their desks and they're loading files and, and getting you know getting applications from servers. Maybe those are in the cloud as well, but you know you kind of have a set of computers that are managing the infrastructure uh, for you. When when we think of Edge, the common one that Stratus deals with is in factories. So if you're thinking about like on the on a factory floor, yeah, um, where there's a bunch of machines, maybe making automobile parts, or they're making food, right? Yep. Like, you know, fruit roll-ups or whatever. <laughs> the, those, those, those or, uh, that that's one form of edge. There's also this notion of what we call, you know, the distributed edge or the far edge, yeah, which could be things like ships and oil rigs. Yeah, it could be um, could be something like a boat, you know, like a like a cargo ship. It could be pipeline. Uh, there's a lot of, believe it or not, there's a lot of computers out on pipelines for oil and gas Yeah, and, and managing things like flow and safety and, and, and things like that. So there's computers deployed at these places, right? And the thing about these computers is, is that they're really, they're, it, it, unlike, you know, when you're dealing with the cloud or a data center where all the computers are pretty similar, these are very diverse, right? They've been, some of them are very, very old. So they're, you know, they're, they're kind of built on antique technology. Some of them are very purpose-built to do one thing. That one thing might be just operating a valve remotely. I mean, yeah. that's a computer, but it's it's a very small one. Or you could have, you know, even laptops and desktops out there measuring, say, the flow through a pipe or something simple like that. Yeah. And um, the problem is, is that um, uh, so so if you think about it, it's really all the stuff that kind of makes the business run outside of the traditional office space, right? Um, What's what's happening though, which is is fascinating, is that there's a couple of things going on that are really kind of game changers for this, right? Okay. The first is is that there's this there's this recognition that you you not only you you not only need more data, but you really need the right data. Yeah. Right? So these so what what even this old stuff, some of this old stuff throws off a lot of data that, that you may never have been able to get access to. You may not have been even if you had access to it, you might not have been able to understand what it what it was telling you. Yeah. You might not, you might, you might not be able to kind of get that data correlated with other points. Let's again like an oil pipeline that's 150 miles long. Maybe you have a computer every four miles or so. Yeah. yeah. If you have that computer every, you know, that's 40 computers. How, how do I know that the data? You know, uh, is in sync or is it even like you know meaningful? So because there's a problem here, but is there a problem eight miles away? I don't know, you know, it's correlation. So there's been a whole bunch of um, uh, work done on that, right? So um, meaning that um, at the edge, what's starting to happen is, is that there's this desire to kind of get more out of the data I'm producing or implement new machines and new controls to even produce more data, which, you know, so I can understand my business better and operate it better. So so the, the, the real, the, the edge, itself yeah is this place that kind of so far has been a little bit of the wild west right yeah and now there's all this additional capability to work with the data and that's kind of where internet of things comes in and stuff like that and then you get to the last part which is okay if i have all this data what do i do with it and that's where edge computing really starts to help because yeah. you can deploy edge computing to help gather that data you can have it filter the data you can um you can actually put um uh, Remote management software, so humans can actually operate the machines remotely. Which yeah. you mentioned, SCADA. SCADA is a great example of how you get the data. SCADA is an architecture that allows you to not only get the data but also allows a human to operate the machine. So we tend to see a lot of people. SCADA is kind of an older architecture, but it's very popularly used in factory floors and so forth. So 
there's this whole kind of new new set of opportunities opening up for a yeah. bunch of technologies that quite frankly are a little bit older, right? And that's where I think if you're a finance person or you're, you're an executive, you're going, wow, there's this great opportunity in front of me to run my business better. And it sounds like it's at the edge and you go, yeah, <laughs> there's this great opportunity. And they go, okay, well, what about the stuff I've got? And what you're finding out is that it's disconnected. It may not be secure. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of security problems at the edge. It, um, it, it may not be you know, up to snuff in terms of connectivity to the cloud or even ability to collect. Some of these things collect data for an hour and then they just throw the data away, right? Because yeah. they only have so much capacity. So, they can... so there's all these problems that are inherent with the technology that exists today. But here's the funny part. The funny part is that the IT guys yeah. have largely solved a lot of these problems with cloud technology and with data center technology and all this other stuff. So they could actually... If you can kind of begin to bring these two worlds together, the yeah. operator world and the technology world, bring them together, yeah, it really opens up a lot of doors for the business. A lot of doors, right? Yeah. So very interesting. So I am actually going to summarize some of the things, and uh, then I am actually going to have some of the clarifying questions. And I am fairly sure that my listeners are going to have those questions as well. Because see, if I look at um, you know more from the finance or operations executive perspective, they have sort of figured out that, okay, I had my traditional data centers, uh, all of my applications were deployed there. Then the cloud came along. Now all of these systems are probably talking to cloud. All of my laptops are actually talking to cloud. We have our SCADA system that are actually sitting on the shop floor. So if I need to read anything from these SCADA systems, then I am able to read using those. But now when you talk about Edge, and my understanding of Edge was that this you are actually putting some of the processing power. It's not going to be a full-blown computer that you are putting at each uh, you know, four miles on the pipeline or on the, on the machine itself, right? It's going to be a tiny fragment of the computer that you have. And then you are going to require some sort of new network. So what is so special about this edge network and the edge infrastructure? Why can we not oh, wow. have these devices talking to, let's say, cloud? So, you know, what is so special about edge? Well, I think th there's a couple things. I think the first, the first one that's important is, is that it's not either or, it's both. Right. Okay. It, it really is, is that so if I'm um, if I'm running an application at the edge that's operating a machine. Right. right. And let's say that machine is a robot. A robot's a good example. Yeah. You want that robot to be getting its commands and everything. Right. Instantaneously, because if, if there's a break in terms of telling the robot what to do, either your production stops or maybe even opens up a safety issue where the robot maybe operates out of control. Right. Yeah. So. You you really want the so the the so from a, from a control perspective, it being able to control and operate a machine, you want that to be at the edge, and you want it to be real time as possible. You you absolutely have to have that. What you're talking about in your case, where a lot of people make a lot of assumptions about the edge, they're talking about the data side. So if you think about the edge, yeah, think about it as managing two things: it manages data and it manages control. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now on the data side. The tr what you said is absolutely true, which is what you're really doing is acquiring data. You're possibly filtering it, and then you're pushing it into a cloud, so or or into maybe even an ERP system to do you know some sort of action on the data, so you yeah. can make better business decisions, right? And that's the that's the data and analytics side of it, which is really kind of the big area of edge right now in terms of people just starting to build out and explore this. This is kind of where they gravitate to first is the, is the data, right? And they go, how can I get the data? How can I get access to it? All that stuff. But when they start to realize that there's a ton of data and that they also are starting to realize that maybe they don't have people, as many people as used to be in the facility, whether it's a factory or an oil refinery or what, yeah. or they want to allow those people to work remotely, that's when control starts to come into play. And that's really where kind of the the this is kind of the newer aspects of edge, which is a lot of people said, edge, I can just put a little tiny computer out there and get the data and everything's going to be fine. Yeah. Um, and the truth is, is that, yeah, you could do that. Right. But if you really want to get the true full value out of it, what you have to do is start to think about how can I actually remotely control my edge site and how can I actually provide a safe environment for those machines to operate? Because ultimately the machines are, you know, machines keep getting smarter and more autonomous over time. Yeah, And in that case, then you need to have more compute to let them do just that, allow them to be more autonomous and, and smart. 
Okay, so let's talk more from the network perspective, right? So obviously, I have my data center. Yeah. That's where I'm managing all of my applications. Everything is sitting inside yeah. that, you know, and I, my assumption is going to be that is probably going to be secure. Now, obviously, I have incorporated some of the cloud application in my network as well. And my assumption is going to be that I can rely on AWS. I can probably rely on uh, my Azure to, to be able to provide the security. So now when I'm installing these edge devices, let's say on each of the machines, or in one of the remote facility where I need to really either get the data yeah. or monitor that. So how is this network architecture going to look like? Are these edge devices directly well, talking to cloud? You mentioned that they are not talking to my data center, but there has to be some sort of communication or integration because my ERP oh, is sitting inside the data center, okay, right? So, so this, this is, a, this. well, let's start with kind of the state of things today versus yeah. the state of things yesterday, right? Yeah, so, yeah. The first problem you have with edge networking is, is that there's a lot of old stuff out there that talks all these old protocols, right? Yeah. In a data center, that's been sorted out for decades. I, you know, TCP IP protocol one, right? So yeah. everything talks to each other over an IP network. And you've got uh, tiered networking going on where you have different layers of switching and routing and stuff yeah. like that. That's a very well-established space. And that works really well when you have a lot of computers and a lot of computers and a lot of compute devices in a confined space. Yeah. So if you think about that, and you, then you go to the next step in the data center and you say, okay, I have a common set of protocols that everybody's talking. Right? Yeah. That's the first big thing. The second thing is I have kind of somewhat tightly distributed compute resources, be it laptops, servers, whatever, that's fine. Then you get to the security layer and what you start to discover is, wow, this is a little bit easier for me because security really works best if it's distributed, right? So, so the security is there. Now, when you go to the edge, what do you have? You have multiple, you have the opposite almost, right? You have yeah. multiple protocols in some cases because you've bought machines from different vendors and not everybody is on IP yet. Yeah. That's coming though. That is happening, right? But yeah. but especially in manufacturing, there's a ton of different protocols floating around. Yeah. By the way, not all of them are secure, right? The second thing you have is you don't have a lot of computers because you just don't, you know, it's it's a production facility. There might not be a lot of employees there. So you don't have a lot of computers and you don't have a lot of data center type of technology in place. That's the yep. second problem. So you don't have necessarily distribution. And then the third part of it is, quite frankly, the cybersecurity tools are, I would say, just starting to get you know to the point of maturity. So now you start to have cybersecurity tools that are now built for the edge that can protect these devices, right? And in a lot of ways, the way, just, just to be frank, the way a lot of companies have dealt with this over the years is just by disconnecting. They just basically say, I've got an edge site. Everything in that site talks to each other, and there's a gap between me and the rest of the universe. Yeah. So yeah. nobody, you know, you basically, you basically, from a, you know, from a networking perspective, have walled off this environment so nobody can touch it unless they physically get inside the building, right? Yep. So that is how in 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 the in the uh, in the edge world they call that air gapping. Basically, there's a gap of air between you and everything else. So air gapping is still a big deal, but now what's happening is all these all these folks are saying, but I want that data. Well, now you got to open up the air gap and connect. And what we're starting to see happen is um, the cybersecurity, the way it kind of works is that instead of having everything secured, since, you know, since the devices are so diverse, what you end up happening is you happen to have a different set of cybersecurity tools and controls to overlay on that edge network to make sure that what's going to the cloud and what's coming in from the cloud are going out to the data cloud or data center. It doesn't really matter. You basically have created a, a way to protect that. So really it's the, the networking is quite different because it's a little bit, it's flatter. It's a little bit more primitive and quite frankly, the, and it's more diverse. So it starts to really introduce some new problems and, and you have to really think of that first. That, that's problem number one, by the okay. way. Let me get to problem number two. Problem yeah. number two is, is that you wake up on a Tuesday or something, you log into your computer at work, you go to the office, and it pops up on your window. Hey, I need to put a bunch of software updates on your machine. What do you do? Yeah. You, you go get a coffee, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you go to get coffee. You go visit you, you go visit the person who's down the next row and talk yep. to them about the weekend, whatever you do. Yeah. Right? If you do that on a robot, the robot stops working. Right. Yep. If you do that on a conveyor belt, the conveyor belt stops going. So do you think that production managers really want to update computers? The answer is no. So another problem you constantly have at the edges is, is this kind of idea of when and how can I make sure that my stuff is up to date? Because otherwise, you know, I'm running old technology or I'm running old servers. I'm running old. So 
this whole idea is, is that how do you kind of make sure that um, you're able to do maintenance on systems in line with the production requirements, right? And that is a really hard challenge. Actually, a couple of years ago, I was at a conference and um, a guy who uh, works for the United States TSA, right? The, the you know, the basically our security agency right now, yeah, the yeah, TSA, yeah. right? Yeah. And he 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 is the guy who is the TSA's liaison, if you will, to the the uh, critical infrastructure sector. The United States has this whole set of industries that are considered critical, you know, the power grid and, uh, um, you know, food production and, you know, manufacturing of military and arms and stuff like that. Yeah. And, and he's the liaison between the government and these organizations. And these organizations consistently tell him the biggest problem they have is keeping their stuff updated. Yeah. So, you know, you've got, you've got systems out there that are a decade plus old that may not be supported. They may not be up to date. Yeah. Um, it's hard to get them up to date. So that's a massive challenge as well. Whereas again, you know, nowadays in the data center world or in the, in the, uh, in the end user computing world, updates are pretty much automatic, right? That is not the case at the edge. Right. So that's a, a great example. And, and, and what I'm going to do is I am actually going to describe a scenario that is going to be based on how you describe. So obviously you have the air gap between your IT and OT and OT infrastructure is sitting sideways and that is actually managing all this complexity that you just mentioned. And that is going to be in the form of your, it's not only going to be the data that you are trying to get, it's also going to be to make sure those firmwares are going to be updated. You always have the security patches that you really need so that you are actually meeting mm -hmm. the cybersecurity requirements. So now if this is uh, yep. happening inside the four walls of a manufacturing company, then you can actually create a network. But let's say if you have these robots in remote, remote location, for example, let's say if you talk about the pipeline example that you mentioned, that's going to be slightly oh, okay. uh, you know, uh, at a distance. So now as the executive, my option is going to be to build a network that is going to be internal. And then I am actually going to be integrating all of these devices in that network. And then I'm going to have an air gap. And then uh, my data center is going to be here. Or do oh. I have some options in the cloud that I can manage my, my OT network in the cloud? Because even if they are going to be a distance, then you know you can go to cloud, you can make that hop, yeah. and then you might have an air gap, and then uh, you have the IT. So yeah. do you want to talk about how that is going to, going to work? Well, 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 it's it's a two, it's a it's a letter and a number, right? It's five G. I think. Yeah. You know what's happening? What's starting to happen in these more distributed edge environments, like oil pipelines, or or something like even where there's it's hard to get connectivity. Yeah. Um, kind of standard network connectivity. Yeah. Um, to bridge IT and OT networks, um, they're now building private private mobile networks, like in mining. Yeah. When you go to a mine. The mine will build the mine would build their OT network by working with a partner, yeah, um, like a telecommunications company. And they'll build a they'll build a private LTE network, or now now they're starting to build out private five G networks. Okay, so I'd say that that's really, I think what's happening there is actually fairly profound um, in the sense that you know there is uh, you're you're able to get a real meaningful level of bandwidth. And throughput, but you also have the nice part about 5G is also the latency and security capabilities on top of what we've had before. So yeah. I'd say what you're going to see happen is, is that the option will be you're going to see a lot more distributed edge computing as a result of 5G rollout. That's going to happen, right? Yeah. That's 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 also the type of that type of technology also opens up a threshold for things even like autonomous driving, right? So yeah. I'd say that's how that's going to really go because there has been a lot of well-founded concern about things like security and, and bridging these networks together. Yeah. I think the technology has gotten better, but I do think that a different type of network, like a 5G network, is also going to be something that people take a very serious look at. Yeah. So if I look at the SMB manufacturing space and if I'm thinking like a finance executive, obviously I'm not going to have enough money to be able to build these private network. I don't know how much they cost, but they sound very expensive. Right. So what are my options at this point of time? Let's say if I want to utilize Edge in my facility and I may have distributed assets that let's say if I want to install Edge devices there, is it going to be in my reach or is it not going to be in, in my reach? If it is going to be in my reach, what is the ideal architecture for me? I'd say a lot of our SMB customers are, are connecting through uh, either a gateway technology, okay. which is a relatively low cost way to do it. Yeah. And they're so they're not connecting everything in their network. They're basically creating a 
a single point of entry for the network through a gateway or through now they're actually companies like Cisco are building gateways into their routers. So you can kind of bridge, you know, you could actually connect a site to uh, a cloud or connect a site back to your data center. Yeah. Um, depending on if you're an SMB, you're probably connecting it back to a cloud. And mm-hmm. those technologies will have the security encryption required. So that there's ways to, I, I absolutely know that there's ways for SMBs to connect their sites like a manufacturing site uh, in particular to, to the cloud. And we see people do it all the time. So I think that's absolutely a scenario that's, um, and there's vendors out there who are not only doing that, but they're also making it pretty cost effective to do, right? A gateway device is less than a thousand dollars. Really the cost is the, the, you know, whatever the cost is to connect the gateway device to whatever backend you might have, be it Azure or Amazon, or, you know, the cost of the net, the cloud part. I think where it starts to get interesting is, is it, or it starts to get really expensive is when it's highly distributed. So instead of having everything in the factory going through one pipe, yeah. you now need to have a pipe to everything. Like an oil gathering is a great example of that. Yeah. And what's historically happened is, is that they've been able to do that with things like radio access networks, which are low cost or doing it with very, very low, very, very low bandwidth types of connections or even things like even stuff like modems and things like that still, which you can't even buy those anymore, but there's stuff that's just out there, right? Yeah. I think 5G is the 5G will be the thing that gets all those mobile things to to update because again, now you're talking about a, a 5G connection that depending on your data usage, again, you can throttle the data very effectively with these devices. And now they're actually starting to sell edge compute devices with 5G right built in, right? You can go to we work with, um, we do some work with Advantech. They're a partner of ours. Yeah. Um, they manufacture uh, some of our equipment and we actually sell some of our software uh, through them. So we have this great relationship. Advantech right now actually has uh, 5G capable devices that you can, uh, edge devices that you can deploy today and, and, and connect uh, through a 5G network, no problem. So I'd say that those options exist. Um, they're relatively new. So, you know, people are still kind of, some of these uh, industries in particular are a little risk averse, yeah. but um, you know, I think over time, you'll see that that's a, a great solution. Yeah. So I know that you wanted to actually cover some of these stories. I don't know if you might want to cover them uh, in brief. What was the uh, sort of the business problem that they had uh, in the uh, place where you work, right? Uh, yeah. For these edge devices, you know, what was the core challenge they had and how edge really helped them provide the business value that they were looking for? Yeah, I mean, we start, I think when you kind of poked on, you know, uh, your small and medium companies that, you know, how can they afford this? Yeah, yeah. I think what ends up happening is is that um, we, we we work with companies like uh, Midstream Oil and Gas, which is yep. essentially the pipelines that connect the gas, you know, the, the, the gas to the consumer or, or the gas to the, the utility provider is actually really what happens. And they, they've gone through a lot, but just in terms of growth through mergers and acquisitions. And the problem starts to become not a problem of ultimately those M&A attempts, if they just kind of keep things the way they are, particularly their infrastructure, yeah. uh, ultimately it starts to catch up to them because of the operational expense of maintaining that infrastructure. Just you, you have so many disparate systems, different vendor relationships and service contracts. I mean, just the operational expense of just keeping the lights on. Yeah, starts to get high in in some of these industries. So we were uh, we we just have been wrapping up a major deployment with a uh, oil and gas pipeline, oil pipeline company, and they had roughly 150 terminal points, meaning you know where maybe oil goes into a truck to be delivered to your gas station, or or comes off a ship and goes into the pipeline to be distributed to somebody else. These terminal points on the pipeline, they had uh, some software that they were running there. That was kind of, you know, it was an older software package, yep. to be honest. They, they, and it wasn't really, they really didn't want to upgrade it because it worked for them. Yep. They also wanted to introduce some new software packages there. So they said, well, how can I do that? Do I have to, now that I have this old stuff, do I just have to kind of put the new stuff next to it? You know, because that's expensive to operate. Yeah. Um, and so that was a problem. And then the second problem was since they'd grown through m a they had all kinds of stuff out there. They didn't, you know, they really didn't have a good feel. So they came to us and said, look, this is just too expensive for us to manage and operate. We want to simplify it. And we said, well, instead of having to put multiple systems at every terminal point, why don't you use a technology like virtualization, which is a tried and true, been out there for 20 years type of technology. But we have a solution that's able to deploy virtualization at the edge and we're able to make it so it doesn't fail. Meaning virtualization is is a tried and true technology, but in terms of real time failover, 
it, 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 it doesn't necessarily have that kind of real-time failover capability, right? So we said, we can bring this to the edge. We can make it mission critical for you so it won't fail. We can make it so that it's um, the way we're architected is we have a very easy service model, meaning that if something breaks, the other system picks up automatically. You take the old system, you throw it away, you plug a new one in, it resyncs automatically. So we've made it so literally somebody with no technology experience can install it, set it up and provision it. We made it so simple to, to deploy yeah. and, and repair. So the idea was, okay, we're going to make this easy for you to deploy and repair so you don't have to have a lot of people servicing the equipment. We're going to have it all under one vendor. So that way you don't have to have a bunch of different service contracts and pay a lot of money for that. And quite frankly, we're going to allow you to grow with time because we're going to give you a system that allows you to run multiple applications on the same system. So you can have your old software on it. You can bring new software to it. And it just really greatly simplified their IT stack. Yeah. And it saved them a bunch of money. So it made a ton of sense for them. And, um, you know, we've, we've done this now for a few oil pipelines, right? So, you know, it's it's a pretty common problem because their business model just works on mergers and acquisitions, right? That they've, they've, That's an industry that's been going through that for years. Um, so that one in particular stands out as a, one of our best success cases. Okay, amazing. So that's it for today. Jason, do you have any last minute closing okay. thoughts or, or remarks for our listeners? I, yeah, I, I, the only, only really one, you know, um, I'd say that there's a lot of potential to make a business better by really, by really looking at the edge. And I think that what's, finally starting to happen, which I think is very promising for businesses, is the idea that I think the IT folks have finally started to arrive at a point, not only from a technology perspective, but also from a capabilities perspective, skill set perspective, yeah. to be able to kind of bring IT capability to these edge sites. And now that you can do that, you can really unlock a lot of potential in the business um, that maybe you, wouldn't, you weren't able to do two, three, or 10 years ago, right? So I'd say that you know the time has really come for us to to really embrace this and, and kind of really help it move the business forward. I agree. And my personal takeaway from this conversation is going to be, obviously, once those uh, endpoints really become intelligent, you can do a lot more. For example, you can control these robots. Okay. Uh, you can uh, do crazy uh, processes and the, and the automation as well. So unless you have that foundation, you have the infrastructure to be able to support these things, it's going to be really difficult. So on that note, Jason, I really want to thank you for your time. This has been an insightful sure. episode. All right. Thank you. Have a good one. You too. I cannot thank our guests enough for coming on the show, for sharing their knowledge and journey. I always pick up learnings from our guests and hopefully you learned something new today. If you want to learn more about Jason, head over to stratus.com. It's S-T-R-A-T-U-S dot com. Links and more information will also be available in the show notes. If anything in this podcast resonated with you and your business, you might want to check other related episodes, including the interview with Michael Pytel, who shares how he can create a far more precise digital twin of the warehouse by mapping warehouse workers in the system. Also, the interview with Kevin Paramore, who discusses the nuances of robotic automation of warehouse and manufacturing processes. Also, don't forget to subscribe and spread the word among folks with similar backgrounds. If you have any questions or comments about the show, please review and rate us on your favorite podcasting platform or DM me on any social channels. I'll try my best to respond personally and make sure you get help. Thank you and I hope to catch you on the next episode of the WBS Podcast. Thank you for listening to another episode of the WBS Podcast. Be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcasting platform so you never miss an episode. For more information on growth strategies for SMBs using ERP and digital transformation, check out our community at wbs.rocks. We'll see you next time.